Hey friends, it's me Micah, and this is the Homestead Bandwagon with another exciting edition of From China with Love, everybody's favorite Chinese tool review segment on YouTube. Uh, today uh, we're looking at uh, something from Saker, S-A-K-E-R. I've looked at Saker tools before. I looked at their mini chainsaw. I looked at their... Uh, uh, Locking lube gun tip. Uh, it's around here somewhere. Uh, okay tools. Liked using them. Uh, I got them for free. This one, guess what, guys? I accidentally bought. I thought I was buying something else. And I, I think I'd put this in my cart so I could kind of look at it later and see if it was something I, it was going to be useful. And then I looked at some videos on similar tools, and they were duty absolute garbage so i was like yeah i'm not gonna buy that thing and then apparently when you turn 40 um or at least when i turned 40 you can't eat cheese anymore you're always itchy and you don't know how to work a computer anymore and you accidentally buy stuff on youtube or accidentally buy stuff on amazon at three in the morning but anyway here it is the saker adjustable ratchet wrench um i've already used this thing um so i'm gonna just pretend to unbox it here we go Yes, this is an adjustable like socket wrench thingy. It's supposed to replace socket wrenches in your toolbox. It's supposed to be pretty universal from like a quarter inch. You can tighten this thing down all the way up to an inch. There's a little roller on the back that you spin um, to widen the jaws. Um, you know, and it's, yeah, it's, it says open and close. You kind of know if you're looking for the top down, what to do with it and, and stuff like that. But yeah, it's supposed to be a universal tool. And as we know, universal tools are generally garbage. Um, so let's just, we're gonna get a close look at this thing and use it just doing some basic tasks. And you will see my friends, um, the verdict on this particular uh, 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 universal tool. Okay, so the idea here is that this tool all by its lonesome would replace um, all these sockets, about 22 sockets between the metric and SAE, and of course, your handle um, in a toolbox. I, good in theory, um, you know, it's, it's nice for space saving, I guess. In reality, I mean, I don't know. If we did a test here, does it really save that much space? I mean, kinda. I think it's just about having one thing rather than a bunch of things, though, that get lost. So, you know, that's what I would like about this is putting it in the toolbox. I don't have to worry about scrounging around for all these sockets. I just grabbed this one. Um, so that seems like a pretty, pretty decent um, argument for a tool like this um, if it works, right? So, yeah, let's go see. Let's, uh, let's uh, just do what this thing's supposed to do. Let's tighten down a couple bolts. Okay, so I've got a bolt um, in a nylock nut here, so at least it'll take a little bit of work to, to, to screw this guy down. And, you know, if it can't do this basic task, I guess we've got a problem. So we're opening the jaws and closing it on the bolt. And I'm going to try to get as much contact between these faces as I can. Uh, so I'm going to use this tool the right way the first time. Okay, so that's on there pretty tight. Um, okay, here we go. Well, would you look at that? Holy smokes. It seems to work for its intended purpose. Um, is it a little wobbly? Yes, it is wobbling all over the stinking place. But um, because these jaws, you know, are cut out like that, they hold on to the edges of the bolt like they're supposed to. So, okay, great. Um, and we can go marginally deep. You know, you got this whole, you know, uh, gear here that you can hit with the top of the bolt that limits your depth. But that's, you know, the depth of a normal socket. Um, you know, pretty effortless. Um, you know, I don't know... We can use a non nylock bolt here and we'll see how the back drag is on this thing. So, you know, when you go to 
ratchet the handle right if it'll easily do it or if it'll just spin the bolt um, let's try that let's take this little guy out I'm not using giant bolts because it's it's harder to grip the small ones than it is the big ones that's always my main concern okay so this thing's sitting in here all loosey-goosey not super tight um, I like that I could do this with one finger I'm actually kind of surprised that this thing isn't just annoying me right out of the gate maybe it's easier to use my thumb okay spin and oh boy yeah I can't tighten it so I would have to spin grab the top see look otherwise I'm just unscrewing and screwing I'm not getting anything done here because we don't have enough friction in here to uh, make the ratchety guy do its ratchety thing so yeah you do have to grab the top of this um, to make it do its its job all right so for unscrewing you wouldn't have a problem but for screwing in the bolt that is that's that's an annoying issue um i guess i could grab here i'll grab a, a regular socket wrench um and and, and see if there's an, enough friction here um, with that just to compare this to a normal tool hold on here okay what size is this does anybody know see this is the big pain in the neck about using these sockets is you know you gotta figure out what size you are so that's why people just like to use adjustable wrenches all right that one's relatively right what's this 14 millimeter okay let's start with uh the cheapest we'll start with the cheapest um one i got the, oh nope oh, that's not the one so this is my my cobalt 90 tooth i use this thing all the time just because i'm not afraid of breaking it so here we go so this will be your standard and look at that um so still i, I would have to uh, i would have to grab the head of my socket to back drag so i can tighten this bolt right i can't otherwise i'm just loosening it what what a bummer okay um so that's cobalt um how about uh, my snap-on here we go we are on the bolt we are tightening but uh geez no ratchet action oh this one's so much quieter can you can you hear this oh i love these snap-ons okay so actually this is this feels pretty tight compared to ooh, this one's a little more loosey-goosey it's more more chunky in there the you know, bigger teeth it feels like um okay last one this is my fancy matco this is with the adjustable head thing do you, do you guys have problems with these you gotta like ah, really push on this thing to adjust the the head but we're not worried about that today okay let's try this one see if this one has a a light feathery enough back drag to turn this bolt inside this nut here we go we have engaged the bolt we have tightened the bolt and yeah not enough back drag and wait i'm the wrong way anyway no i was the right way turning right and then i have to i have to grab my socket when i spin back to start otherwise it'll just loosen that bolt up so okay that's that's normal with any socket then so the back drag on this isn't too heavy and what is nice is when i'm engaged on this bolt is i can touch from the top to pack back drag instead of being having to reach around so if i am in a tighter spot i guess that's an advantage so this thing might actually end up in the in the uh, tractor toolbox i don't know um what else can we compare it to uh you know of course you know your adjustable wrench right let's get these guys on here and tighten them down um the reason you're more apt to round off you know these bolts is because you only have two faces here 
Whereas on this guy, I'm, I'm meeting it, I'm touching it on uh, four faces. Um, and then your socket will either have, you know, six faces. Well, it'll have six faces touching on this. Um, and yeah, so yep, the Nipex as well, really expensive tool. You know, you get the exact right size though. And, you know, tighten these down real easy as long as you have a good enough grip in your old hands. If your hands are cold, you know, or arthritic or whatever, you know, it's, it's nice to have something that does that gripping for you. Um, what else do I have here? Look at this piece of garbage. This, this is an old gator grip. This is the OG gator grip. I bought this years ago and never used it because you can just tell from the get that it was going to break. This has got like these little pins in it that, that depress around something. And I'll tell you what, when you try to use this thing, you also get really depressed. Um, let's attach this to the snap on. All right. So we're going to press it down onto the bolt and it, it holds that bolt relatively well. I mean, this is an easy to spin bolt, but if the bolts all, all the way tightened down, there we go. Now we're going to try to put some chutzpah on it and the pins just good. Oh boy. Yeah, it, it doesn't do a very good job of gripping stuff. So if you have to really loosen something um, that's really seized, you know, you're going to have these pins just, you can hear them popping off and getting stuck. So that's why these, you know, universal um, tools are all so maligned. So that guy has a really hard time once this bolts all the way on. Ugh. Well, that time it didn't do too bad, but I can see it's already marring the edges of this bolt. Uh, but these are famous for kind of for kind of busting off and uh, destroying themselves. How about this guy? So that bolt is all the way tightened. Ugh. I'm actually getting more <laughs> interesting, more torque on this bolt. Man, this thing. So it's starting starting to rotate. Is is it the bolt that's starting to rotate here? Let's see. I wish I had some fancy way of holding this bolt in place, but this will have to do. Okay. Let's just give this some muscle. I'll tell you, it's it's gripping that bolt pretty well. It is not um, opening up on top of it. I think I just, uh, I think I just tightened it down hard enough. I might have busted the head off this bolt. Holy smokes. I am really, really shocked right now. Let's, let's look at this bolt. And the edges are, of it aren't all screwed up. Um, uh, let's try to loosen it real quick. Let's use, let's use the Matco here with the 12-inch handle and just see if we can put more. Yeah, I could put I could put enough force on this that I'm bending the jaws of this. What's this? Uh, oh, this is my Harbor Freight <laughs> Central Forge vise. Um, here, we'll try to just... Oh, yeah, they are seized together now. So now I'm just messing up the vise. Okay, um, boy, this thing is held onto that bolt better than I thought it would. Um, I could try it on something rusty, but I know that I'm just going to bend this thing. Um, let's try, you know, another thing I hear these things are good at is, uh, wow. Yeah, this thing is messed up. I, I, I can't imagine, I believe I put so much torque on it with this thing. Um, okay. Um, hooks like this, it would kind of make sense. So we can tighten it down on the hook and then tighten. That's a pretty useful uh, usage for this tool. You have, have something that comes out either side of it. Of course, the socket wrench isn't going to do it. And again, if you don't have good grip with uh, something like that, 
you know, and actually you could only have something sticking out that way. Um, you know, guy like this too, you know, you don't have space this way and this way, only this way. So there we go. That's a nice use for that. I've got something really wide that I need to just really, really torque on and it protrudes out either side. So, okay. Huh. That's pretty neat. Okay, what one other bolt? Let's go to the logging truck here. I'm just gonna put this thing on a bolt that's probably rusted or seized. I'm just gonna see if this thing will break free or break off. I'm not gonna try to try to break it purposefully, but let's just let's just give it a shot here. Okay, here's some. Oh yeah, that's some good old bolts. Okay, so we're trying to we're trying to open these or we're trying to unlock these. So let's just uh Get this on there. Okay, there we go. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I can certainly round off this bolt if I want to. Um, let's get all points on it again. Yeah, see, I, I struggle to get it tight enough by turning this thing. But, I mean, this bolt is completely seized on here. I have yep yeah I can I can round that off all day if I wanted to um, I mean there's rust let's try this one over here that one doesn't look quite as terrible oh gosh Ow, I hurt my thumb. Okay, um, so yeah, I mean, this thing is seized. It's hard to get a really good grip on it anyway. Um, you know, you can't get a super tight grip with this thing. Uh, but honestly, I mean, that's not the, uh, the purpose of it. Uh-oh, uh -oh. <laughs> and it's stuck on there. There we go. I don't even know if I could get this off. Let's try just a standard socket. Um, let's try a standard socket with a, a longer handle just to see if I can even get it off. Okay, I'm, I'm using a 12 point on this, so the purists are gonna go, oh, eh, don't do that. But you know what, I'm using a 12 point on the long Matco. This is a 12 inch. All right, here we go. And I'm just gonna push on it with my body weight. Nothing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break this handle that's why it has a lifetime warranty right now it's not popping off the head of that bolt but oh boy i'm really flexing <laughs> i'm really flexing this thing right here i'm gonna bust it i'm pretty sure matco gives you a lifetime warranty on these ooh, ooh, ooh. okay so that's not gonna break that um let's put a uh put an impact on it and see if it pops off Okay, just for fun, just for fun, I'm going to use the my big burly snap-on and uh, just see if I can wang this thing off here. Yeah, not even close. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're going to do the impact with the biggest battery I've got. Nothing. <laughs> oh. Did that loosen a little? Whew, this guy's a little warm. There's smoke coming out <laughs> from below the bolt. So that thing's really rusted in there. Let's just see if it loosened it up at all. Oh, heck no. Okay, so the Saker wouldn't do it. The, the Matco handle ain't gonna do it, you know, with a regular socket. This impact rated socket on an impact gun ain't gonna do it. I mean, what's that tell you? Okay, friends, so, so what's the verdict on, on, on this Saker uh, adjustable ratcheting 
socket wrench universal tool um, compared to you know good old reliable tools you know made in the USA um, actually this this is probably made in China or something this is Pittsburgh I got this from Harbor Freight but hey the, the handle that's a that's a good old American snap-on right and whatever um, it, honestly I think it does really good at what its intended purpose is the intended purpose is to tighten and loosen bolts uh, <laughs> right like oh, I got some schmutz in my camera hold on here so if you're using it for its intended purpose tightening and loosening stuff you know it does a pretty good job it takes up less cluttery space in maybe your handy person's toolbox um, I would reach for it in a pinch. Why not? I, I am going to put it in the back of the tractor's toolbox. Um, right now I've got two uh, crescent wrenches in there. I'll have one crescent and have this replace the other. It's a little bit big and bulky. Um, I mean, that's pretty thick, right? But compared to a socket on a, on a, on a socket wrench, okay. Not too bad. Um, it did slip on the rusted bolt I put it on, but the thing wasn't spinning. I was putting all my all my effort into a lot of weight on this thing, and it felt solid while I was doing it. I was worried that the innards of this thing were going to shatter when I put that much weight into it. I am not a light person. I was leaning all the way into it. Um, they did not, um, you know, just your your little grippers here um, just came loose and round it, started to round off that bolt. Um, I'm not seeing any damage. And long story short, this thing, there's a, there's a number of these online made in China that knock off the original Crescent design. I bought this one by accident. I think it's a happy accident. This thing actually did a really good job of tightening down a normal everyday bolt and the rusted one wasn't going to come off anyway. So, um, and then I like the idea that I can have stuff protruding from either side, like a hook or something that I'm trying to tighten into a piece of wood. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to go use this thing in the wood shop to do that, um, setting up some hooks for storing stuff. So, um, yep. Uh, you know, if you had your eyes on one of these, I can tell you at least the Saker one seems to hold up to moderate use. You know, I'm not going to abuse it. I don't want to try to break it this time. Um, but it seems to hold up to moderate use. So if you're thinking I'm getting it or, or you accidentally bought it on Amazon like I did, eh, shoot, whatever. Or you can go to smartsaker.com or look for Saker, S-A-K-E-R, on Amazon. They have a, a million things on there, a bunch of knockoff stuff. But this one seemed to be okay for the handy person on a budget or somebody who needs um, just a kind of go-to tool when uh, they don't have a lot of space in their tool box and just need something to do a quick tighten or loosen. There you go.